This volume is called the A Book of Delights, and it's edited by John Hadfield. And it contains a, a, an, an extract from Tristram Shandy. And this is uh, Book 8, which was written in 1765. And Stern has always been um, a useful writer for anthologies and for extracts. In fact, there was a book that came out shortly after he died called The Beauties of Stern, which were just little quotations. And But Hadfield decided that this particular passage was suitable for his book of delights. And it describes, or it's headed, the undoing of Uncle Toby. And it's the confrontation between the most desirable woman that ever existed, the widow Wadman, and the innocent and injured Uncle Toby in his sentry box. I'm half distracted, Captain Shandy, said Mrs Wadman, holding up her cambric handkerchief to her left eye as she approached the door of my Uncle Toby's sentry box. A moat or sand or something, I know not what, has got into this eye of mine. Do look into it. It is not in the light. In saying which, Mrs Wadman edged herself close in beside my Uncle Toby and squeezing herself down upon the corner of his bench, she gave him an opportunity of doing it without rising up. Do look into it, said she. Honest soul. Thou didst look into it with as much innocency of heart as ever child looked into a rarey show box, and twere as much a sin to have hurt thee. If a man will be peeping of his own accord into things of that nature, I've nothing to say to it. My Uncle Toby never did, and I will answer for him that he would have sat quietly upon a sofa from June to January, which, you know, takes in both the hot and the cold months, with an eye as fine as the Thracian Rodopis beside him, without being able to tell whether it was a black or a blue one. The difficulty was to get my Uncle Toby to look at one at all. Tis surmounted, and I see him, yonder, with his pipe pendulous in his hand, and the ashes falling out of it, looking and looking, and then rubbing his eyes and looking again with twice the good nature that ever Galileo looked for a spot in the sun. In vain. For by all the powers which animate the organ, Widow Wadman's left eye shines this moment as lucid as her right. There is neither moat or sand or dust or chaff or speck or particle of opaque matter floating in it. There is nothing, my dear paternal uncle, but one lambent delicious fire furtively shooting out from every part of it in all directions into thine. If thou lookest, Uncle Toby, in search of this moat one moment longer, thou art undone. I protest, madam, said my Uncle Toby, I see nothing whatever in your eye. It is not in the white, said Mrs. Wadman. My Uncle Toby looked with might and main into the pupil. Now, of all the eyes which ever were created, from your own madam up to those of Venus herself, which certainly were as venereal a pair of eyes as ever stood in her head, there never was an eye of them all so fitted to rob my Uncle Toby of his repose as the very eye at which he was looking. It was not, madam, a rolling eye, a romping or a wanton one, nor was it an eye sparkling, petulant or imperious, of high claims and terrifying exactions, which would have curdled at one that milk of human nature of which my Uncle Toby was made up. But it was an eye full of gentle salutations and soft responses. Speaking not like the trumpet stop of some ill-made organ in which many an eye I talk to holds coarse converse, but whispering soft, like the last low accent of an expiring saint. How can you live comfortless, Captain Shandy, and alone, without a bosom to lean your head on or trust your cares to? It was an eye, but I shall be in love with it myself if I say another word about it. It did my Uncle Toby's business. <laughs>